All right, what is going on everybody? It's John here and I am back with another Modern Warfare commentary and today, this is it. I am going to be giving you guys my final review of Modern Warfare. With the release of Black Ops Cold War being very imminent, less than a week away, I decided that today should be the day that I finally give you guys my final review of Modern Warfare and this may possibly be my final Modern Warfare video in general, but I am not entirely sure on that just yet. I may still have one more Modern Warfare video coming out after this one. As you guys may already know, I have been pretty busy with school recently, specifically homework, so depending on how homework is looking next week for me, I may or may not have another Modern Warfare video coming out after this one, but more than likely I will since I won't have a Black Ops Cold War video ready on the first day it launches. So yeah guys, it really depends on how next week turns out. I'll just have to hope that I get another Warzone victory, <laughs> maybe that'll be my final video. Anyways, as always, in this review I am going to be talking about the four modes we had in Modern Warfare which were Campaign, Spec Ops, multiplayer and warzone and i'm going to be reviewing each one of them in that order before we get into it i just wanted to say i cannot believe that it's already been over a year since modern warfare release i just i can't <laughs> it doesn't feel like it to me and i don't know if it's because i've been pretty busy with school like i mentioned and i haven't been able to get on and play but I don't know guys, it feels like at most it has only been half a year, six months of being on Modern Warfare. I feel like every event just flew by and on top of that, I still have many videos that I wanted to make. For example, I wanted to make a video on the new weapons we got for Season 6, like the AS Val and the SPR. I wanted to make many different blueprint videos since recently I've been purchasing many different unique blueprints from the store and obtaining many different ones as well. I wanted to make a video on the new maps we got for Season 6. I wanted to make a video on the new playlist for Season 6, etc. There are so many video ideas I've had in mind, but because of school, I have not been able to release them all or even make any of them. And now that Modern Warfare's life cycle is about to end in less than a week, it's pretty much too late for me now. I don't know guys, I just, I can't believe it. 12 months already. I still remember my very first moments of playing Modern Warfare. I remember my first time ever playing Piccadilly on TDM, which was not really the best experience. I remember playing Ground War for the first time ever. I remember playing the beta. <laughs> I even remember playing the 2v2 alpha. <laughs> All of that barely feels like it's been only a couple months ago, but no, it's already been past a year, so. I don't know guys, again, just time flies by. Anyways, these videos tend to be a lot longer than my usual videos, so with that being said, let's just go ahead and get started so this video doesn't pass like a 30 minute mark. All right, let's start off by talking about campaign. Now, campaign was definitely one of the best campaigns we have ever gotten in Call of Duty history. Before Modern Warfare released, I made a mention that I was going to play campaign first. Not multiplayer, not spec ops, not even warzone, nope. I was going to play campaign first and try out the first couple missions to see what it's really like. At that time, the leaks and rumors were indicating that this was going to be one of the most brutal and gruesome campaigns we have ever gotten in Call of Duty history. And you know what? They were right. After playing the first couple minutes and missions of the campaign, I was already into it. I wanted to continue playing it all night and just finish it all in one go because it was just that good. The whole time, I was just shocked. I couldn't believe that Infinity Ward actually gave us a campaign this brutal, especially in the year 2020 because you already know how this year has been. There were so many crazy missions that I never thought we would get in any Call of Duty game. For example, the mission Hometown where you played as a kid as younger Farah, that was a crazy mission. That honestly made no Russian for Modern Warfare 2 look like nothing. Clean House was another mission that many people enjoyed where you raid an apartment as a special forces operator using night vision and in a stealthy manner. I really like this mission because it kind of in a way puts you in the perspective of a special forces operator raiding a house. Again, these missions made you really think about the real world, as in real life scenarios, how it would really be to raid a house as a special forces operator, to experience a terrorist attack, all that kind of stuff in game. Overall guys, I had a ton of fun playing the campaign and in some moments I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was such a crazy campaign and What's even crazier is the fact that it was going to be a lot more brutal than it already was. Infinity Ward had plans to put some crazy scenes, some very powerful scenes that you would never see in any other Call of Duty game or in any game for that matter, but 
Due to its crazy brutality, it had to be censored because it just wouldn't be acceptable, especially in these days. If I'm not mistaken, Modern Warfare's campaign was banned in some countries, such as Russia, so that just goes to show you how crazy it was. My rating for the campaign would be a solid 10 out of 10. No doubt, again, I had a ton of fun playing it, I didn't want to get off of it as soon as I played the first couple missions, I just wanted to continue playing it off, but of course that day I had school the next day, so <laughs> that wouldn't really be an option, but again, this campaign, very good, and because of how crazy it was, I cannot wait to see what Black Ops Cold War's campaign is going to be like. Well, supposedly, I heard it might even be more brutal and more gruesome than Modern Warfare's campaign, and if this is true after everything we saw, then this is going to be another mind-blowing campaign that I cannot wait for. Alright guys, moving on to Spec Ops, let me just start off by saying that this is probably going to be the one mode that I talk the least about because, honestly, I did not play Spec Ops at all this year. I only played Survival. In my previous monthly reviews that I've done for Modern Warfare, I've always rated Spec Ops based off of my experience that I had on Survival, and that's exactly what I'm going to be doing for my final review as well, because honestly, I cannot really give you guys a super good and detailed review for Spec Ops if I didn't play it that much. Survival was pretty fun. The first time I played it was with my cousin, if I'm not mistaken, I think we made it to Wave 18 on Grozna Raid, and it was pretty cool because um, we had different weapons and the mechanics were also a lot different compared to Modern Warfare 3's survival mode. However, to me, I felt that Modern Warfare's survival was a lot harder than Modern Warfare 3's survival because in the early waves, you already had juggernauts coming your way and <laughs> those juggernauts would be a pain in the ass to take out. One thing I didn't really like about it though was the fact that the bots did not come to you. You had to go to them. For some reason, the bots would just be roaming around looking for you but they did not know your exact location so if you had a really good camping spot inside of a building and you were going to just camp it out right there make it to the highest way possible it was not going to go too smoothly because only a few would come to you but the rest would just be roaming around and oh man guys it would be pretty annoying trying to look for them i think some of them would spawn in with ghosts so yeah imagine trying to look for just one more bot that you need to kill on a big map like grosno raid to end the wave yeah that's definitely not fun so my rating for spec ops would be a solid 7 out of 10 and again i kind of wish i did play the normal missions that you would complete in the world of redansk if i'm not mistaken because now that I think about it, it probably would have been a ton of fun. After playing Warzone and exploring pretty much everything about the world of Redansk, I don't know, it probably would have been a lot of fun to complete missions in certain areas for that map. But again, I'm not really sure, guys. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys did play Spec Ops and completed missions. Was it pretty fun or was it boring? All right, guys, moving on to multiplayer. Now, this is going to be... A very interesting one because I know a lot of people had very mixed feelings about multiplayer. Many people enjoyed it, many people loved it, many people hated it, many people didn't really care, many people found it to be average, many people thought differently about it, let's just say that. And I'm here to tell you that I thought that Modern Warfare's multiplayer was pretty decent. It could have been one of the best, if not the best, multiplayer in Call of Duty history if it wasn't for Infinity Ward's weird changes that they made. The new game mechanics that were added were pretty good in my opinion, but they had their flaws as well. For example, Super Sprinting, obviously it's pretty nice to be able to run a little bit faster than usual, maybe sprint faster, but I did not like the fact that it would mess up your analogs after only a couple of months. <laughs> I mean, you're double tapping it or rapidly pressing it many times, so that is bound to happen. Mounting was pretty controversial. A lot of people didn't like it. Some people loved it, but me, I didn't really care about it. I thought it was actually a pretty good feature since you can mount your weapon, have no recoil, and beam people across the map. But People didn't like it because campers would use that to their advantage. They would get in the building, mount their weapon, and if it was an LMG, good luck. You're pretty much done, so... <laughs> Yeah, again, controversial, but in the end, not that bad. The gunsmith was very detailed. I really liked how you were able to customize your weapon in many different ways, and you had to be very careful when making your class setups as well, because 
Adding one attachment over the other one would really affect your weapon in terms of aiming stability, recoil control, uh, damage range, damage, uh, all that kind of stuff. It made the gameplay feel very realistic and fun, and again, it could have been one of the best, if not the best multiplayer in Call of Duty history, but of course, there were some changes made that people did not enjoy at all. Number one, the new minimap. I did not like the new minimap that much because even if you had no suppressor, you could shoot all you want to and you won't appear as a red dot on there. And I know you guys might be thinking, wow, this is actually pretty good because every time I would shoot, it would give my position away if I had no suppressor. Yeah, but then this promotes camping. You can shoot in the building all you want to and nobody will know you're in there unless uh, the enemies are giving callouts to their teammates because there's no red dot on the minimap, no indicator. Instead, we got the coordinates, which I would rarely use. I only use these in Warzone. I do not use them in multiplayer, and I know. The red dots do appear on the coordinates, but I, that's just, yeah, it still promotes camping because it doesn't tell you the exact location and where the enemy is at. Number two, ghost being overpowered. Why can you have ghost on? and sit in the corner the whole game and not appear on the minimap. Even if someone puts up an advanced UAV. I don't think that is fair. Actually, you know what? No, 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 that is not fair at all. You're telling me that you can stay in the building in St. Petrograd the whole game and even if the enemy puts up, I don't know, 10 advanced UAVs, you will never appear because you have ghost on. You could just sit in the corner, you don't need to move, and you just, you won't appear, you're safe. That's another factor that promotes camping. It would have been better if Infinity Ward made it to where you have to move in order for ghosts to work. You have to rush, you can't just be standing still, sitting in the corner the whole game and you're not visible on the minimap even when there's a UAV or advanced UAV up. By the way, I'm glad that Treyarch did that for Black Ops Cold War, just like they did back in Black Ops 4, Black Ops 3, and their previous titles because, yeah. <laughs> Ghost being like that, how it was in Modern Warfare, that's obviously going to promote camping. If you're not uh, visible on the minimap at all, not even an advanced UAV, nothing, then yeah, you're not gonna feel the need to rush if, you know, you can just stay in one spot and just get all your streaks and all that. Number three. Dead silence not being a perk. Why is that silence not a perk? Why? Oh yeah, because it might be too overpowered for rushers. That's right. Again, dead silence being a field upgrade and only being um, active for like what, 10 seconds or 15 seconds unless you get a kill and it refreshes your timer. That's going to promote camping because people are scared to rush since the footsteps on here are very loud. And that's going to bring me onto number four, loud footsteps. Oh my goodness guys, the footsteps on Modern Warfare were absolutely loud. If that silence was a perk, I would be okay with the footsteps being this loud. But since it's not, no, definitely not. This promoted camping to a whole nother level because add this on with the other factors I just mentioned, ghosts being overpowered, you got somebody camping in the building with ghosts and he can hear your footsteps so he knows you're coming. And because that silence is not a perk, yeah, you're probably going to die since he already anticipated you. And number five, the big map design. Why is Piccadilly a map? Why is it? Why is uh, Ramaza a map? Why is St. Petrograd a map? Why are all these maps? Why? <laughs> oh man, these maps are for campers. Let's just say that. They really are for campers. There are so many buildings, so many doors. And oh look, there's another thing that I guess we could say was not that great that was added. Doors. See, there are so many more things I could talk about, but I'm just gonna mention these five things because if not, I'm gonna be stuck here all day. But the maps were absolutely huge. And again, if you had every factor I just mentioned, Dead Silence not being a perk, loud footsteps, ghosts being overpowered, you not appearing on the mini map when you shoot, even without suppressor, and you put that with big maps, okay, you're basically encouraging people to camp. Why wouldn't you wanna camp at this point? I mean, you have so many features that you can take advantage of as a camper and just dominate in every lobby by staying in one building. So again guys, Modern Warfare's multiplayer could have been the best with the features we got. The new gunsmith, the realism, and the weapons felt very good. All of them. The AK-47, the Growl, the MP5, the MP7, the P90. Like I said, all of them felt very good to use. But because of the changes that Infinity Ward made, it didn't really live up to that expectation. So my rating for multiplayer would be a solid 6 out of 10. Again, it could have been a 10 out of 10, just like the campaign, but these changes were not for everybody. Definitely not for me. <laughs> At this point, you're only gonna find me and shoot the ship, or shoe house and shipment, but sometimes I will play on the big maps, only objective, because 
That's when people don't camp. If we play TDM or Kill Confirm, oh my goodness, guys. Yeah, the amount of camping, yeah, it's just horrible. It's unbearable. All right, guys, moving on to Warzone. Now, Warzone, I like to call this the savior of Modern Warfare because if it wasn't for Warzone being a thing, I don't think Modern Warfare would be as successful as it was. Warzone pretty much carried Modern Warfare because if that wasn't a thing and it was just multiplayer spec ops and campaign the whole year, I don't think many people would still be playing Modern Warfare. I feel like many would have already returned to Black Ops 4 or maybe even World War 2. Hell, many people would have returned back to Blackout for Black Ops 4. I definitely would have done that. I would have been shifting from Modern Warfare's multiplayer to Blackout, back to multiplayer to Blackout all the time. but. Luckily, Warzone was a thing in Modern Warfare, and my goodness, guys, Warzone, yeah, this was definitely one of the best things that ever happened. To this day, I still enjoy Warzone. I play with my brother, cousins, homies, or whoever, and I always have a ton of fun playing. In fact, I used to think that Blackout was still a little bit better than Warzone, but now at this point, I think Warzone is a lot better. I'm not saying that Blackout was bad, but Warzone... Oh my goodness, guys, this is definitely one of the biggest upgrades. We've had so much go down this year, like the Bunker 11 Easter eggs. We had the RCXC Easter egg. We also had the Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War review event that happened in Warzone. We had the Top of Stadium blown off, which allowed us to enter, explore, and loot it. We had the interior of Train Station open up, which also allowed us to enter, explore, and loot it. We had the new subway station get added. We had the new train roaming around the world of uh, Redansk and much more. Oh yeah, and let me not forget about the most recent event, the Haunting of Redansk, where we got Nighttime Battle Royale and we also got Zombie Royale. So many things went down with Warzone this year and the gameplay overall was a ton of fun. We had many meta shifts, first the M4, then the Crowd, then the Bruin, then whatever weapon it is right now, and it's not in that order obviously. I'm just mentioning some of the weapons that were the meta and everybody was using. And honestly guys, I'm just very excited to see what is going to happen in the future for Warzone, especially when Black Ops Cold War comes out because it is now confirmed and we can even see it in the main menu for Black Ops Cold War that you're going to be able to select Warzone in there. You don't have to go back to Modern Warfare to play Warzone. And Activision recently confirmed that Black Ops Cold War content will be getting added to Warzone in December. And we're also going to be getting much more things, possibly a new Warzone map. I heard uh, rumors and leaks of a Rebirth Island from Black Ops 1. We might even get Urzik Sand from Modern Warfare, which I don't know if that's still going to be a thing. Maybe it will and maybe a completely new Warzone map that we have never seen before. There's even rumors that Alcatraz is going to be making a return for Warzone. It's going to be its own island on the map. So again, many things to be excited for Warzone's future and I cannot wait, guys. For all these reasons, I give Warzone a solid 10 out of 10. Every time I play it, I have a ton of fun. When I play with my homies and cousins, we always share laughs. We are always having a ton of fun as well. We're taking dubs. It's just, oh man, guys, Warzone, again, if it wasn't for Warzone and Modern Warfare, I don't think many people will be playing it and having that much fun. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much going to be my final review of Modern Warfare. I'm not exactly sure how long this video is going to be, but based off of how long I've been recording, probably going to be a longer one. So yeah, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end it off right here. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to drop a like if you guys enjoyed, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new, and turn on post notifications so you guys are notified every single time whenever I upload. We are super close to hitting 600 subscribers, just 21 subscribers away now, and if you aren't subscribed already, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button, help me hit 600 before Cold War releases. That may be me reaching a little too much, but you never know. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys thought about Modern Warfare overall. Was it a pretty good game? Was it disappointing? Maybe Black Ops 4 was better? anything let me know there's a rumor that a possible season 7 will be releasing for modern warfare after black ops cold wars release so i don't know guys maybe i'll make a return to modern warfare but i'm not too sure maybe if we get new weapons i definitely will but like i said we'll just have to wait and see how things go for the last time thank you guys so much for watching if you haven't already make sure to drop a like and i hope you guys have a nice and wonderful sunday and with all that being said it's been john ready to get back on the grind and enjoy these final days of modern warfare and i'm out peace